Hopefully we're not gonna get drenched. Quality? Oh. This fluid is not very nice looking. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. And there was actually oh, oh that's a major what? diesel spill then what I was talking about. Not very dirty. The vehicle what? that is as dirty as it gets in our garage. Now I do have to say the Discovery 4 does look a bit tiny in our garage compared to when the green is inside the garage. Are you gonna blow it with a leaf blower? In this episode, we're gonna change all fluids on our new to us L405. Hope you enjoy the video. We just started filming and you're eating already. Yes, I'm hungry. It's a 2015 with the 4.4 liter TDV8. And in this episode, we wanna change all fluids on this vehicle, including differential and automatic transmission oil. And I'm going to show you how that underbody of that L405 looks. Okay, when you're done chewing. When I'm done chewing. That vehicle is rated at 2,400 kilograms. We put it on a scale and it weighed, just with Christian and me, 2,800 kilograms. This is at the maximum capacity of our lift. It's supposed to be 2.4 tons. Maybe the truck scale isn't working. Okay? No, it's working because mine was scaled at 2,900, 2.9 tons. The scale works. He has a critter chewing at our car. Oh my God. Now first step always is to remove your fill plugs first. Don't open your drain plugs, let your oil out, and then your fill plug is all gone. Yeah, especially on a new to you car. The change interval from Land Rover for the rear and front differential on this vehicle is actually whopping 120,000 miles. Okay. Holy cow! I did not find anything in the records that this oil was changed, so we're simply going to change it. This way we know. You can see the fluid level is already perfect because I removed the drain plug and it's already dribbling. And it looks clear. Oh, let's hope we don't get drenched. <laughs> we we'll always get drenched. It's an end roller. Well, that oil... Oh, it looks brand new. Doesn't it doesn't it? look brand new. It looks like used oil. It's like used for 20,000 miles. And this vehicle only holds like a very small amount of oil. <gasps> the wind! The wind is causing the oil spill. Yeah. Here's the debris we got, which is nearly nothing. Okay, very fine dust. Rain plug gets torqued to 30 newton meter and 75W90 GL5 and the rear gets about 0 0.82 liters. But it gotta be filled until it weeps out of the level plug. So here it is in. Until it ripples out. Until it ripples out of the field block. Exactly. So an eternity later. Oh, look at that. The dribble. There is the dribble. So it's full and it also matches about the 0 0.85. Stupid wind. So one job done. Ah, perfect. On the front differential, the procedure is exactly the same, except you gotta take more stuff off. Yeah. <laughs> and immediately check for oil leaks. Ooh, nice, no yeah. oil leak. On this vehicle, you also gotta remove this little cross member. Even though it's an L405, it's still just nuts and bolts. And you can see the drain plug is right below this little cross member. Yeah. So this procedure is now exactly the same as in the rear. You can see the oil quality, Ooh. just like the one in the back. Now the front only holds 0 0.61 liters of differential oil. That's about the same amount you have in a smart car. <laughs> 30 Newton meters. So we have a slight dribble. So that's just what we do. And the little bracer goes back in. Yeah. Differential case brace bolts gets 15 Newton meters. Oh, my Uga Duga, my small one, almost does 15 Newton meters. Well, it does. Rear and front differential oil change is done. 
to change the fluid of our transfer case because the online service record from this vehicle said that it was renewed at 123,000 kilometers. So now everybody can print out an online service record from a Land Rover maintained vehicle online. I'm gonna post the link in the video description. Change interval for the transfer case is actually 80,000 miles or 60 months under regular use, okay? If you go heavy duty with this vehicle, you're towing or you go in sub-zero temperatures or you're driving a lot in dusty environments or you go wading, it's much earlier. Differential Vista lockers are 80,000 miles under regular use. The open differential, according to the Land Rover service instruction, is 160,000 miles or 120 months. Oh my okay. God. Some and, of these vehicles don't last. And you are long. talking about miles, not kilometers. Miles. I only found it in, uh, in miles. Also on this vehicle, you're supposed to change your dynamic response fluid. Okay. That's what the power steering fluid is in other vehicles, except on this vehicle. It's actually used to control the sway bar dynamic response. It's, it's this module here connected to the sway bar, or basically it is the sway bar. This hydraulic actuator is running servo fluid and it's supposed to be changed every 160,000 miles. It's really windy, I'm afraid. Now we're gonna attack the automatic transmission, ZF8 HP. Now that one, according to some sources, is filled for life. That is not true. If you look in different service records from Land Rover, you find that this one actually gets a change every 50,000 kilometers. Oh my God. The filled for life instruction is only under very light duty use, which again is above sub-zero temperatures, no wading, no pulling, and only driving around as if the queen would be sitting on the back seat drinking her tea. <laughs> okay, yeah. so any other case, this thing needs an oil change every 50,000 kilometers. It says it right in the Land Rover service workshop manual. Now, other sources say that it gets an oil change every 160,000 miles after 120 months. That's equivalent to filled for life. You compare that to, for example, a life sentence in Germany. You don't go to prison for life like in the States. You actually get released after 15 years, okay? Fill for life means if you exceed the lifetime, the lifetime is over. You should have changed your oil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The lifetime of the oil <laughs> is over. You just don't know when that is. All dry here. Looks like our oil leak repair worked. We fixed the oil cooler gasket. Yeah. So here is a culprit. Oh, there's another bracket. Oh my God. The brackets are good. <laughs> oh, yes. That's the stuff you don't want to forget to put back on. Yes, please. The oil you see here is actually engine oil. The vehicle had a pretty bad oil cooler gasket leak and a little leak on the back side of the engine from the turbocharger cooling line. There is a separate video how we fix this. It's a pretty straightforward repair and most vehicles are affected. Just nuts and bolts, like I told you earlier. Now that after Christmas you have a lot of empty ice cream containers. And another bracket. A new original ZF oil pan, which comes with a filter installed. These oil pans have a date stamp, which is right here. Okay, so ours is already in our possession since 1222. So that one is a year old. Before we take all this apart, I'm gonna verify here quickly that it is the same part. You have it the and other way around. That's why it was the wrong part. <laughs> yes. I was just getting ready to complain. <laughs> Depending on what kit you buy, it comes with a new connector sleeve and you're supposed to change this connection piece between the Meshatronic unit below here and the gearbox, but we're not gonna do that. No? No, I don't wanna <gasps> get the Meshatronic unit out. The car is not old enough. But I would say around 200,000 kilometers, I would change that piece. You should explain about the adaptation values and the need for the gap okay. tool. 
once we have that oil change performed completely and we also check the level, we got to reset the adaptation values of the transmission. For that, you need actually a gap tool or something similar. Mm -hmm. If you drive your new oil with the old adaptation values, your transmission will not behave correctly. Because we get a lot of comments, they just change the automatic transmission oil uh, and the car. Yeah, and the drive sucks. Yeah, and the I drive mean, sucks. There's always a huge discussion if you have to do a transmission oil flush or if you can just change your oil. My recommendation and from what I found from knowledgeable people on the internet is do an oil change between 50 and 100,000 kilometers on these transmissions and do not flush them. You also got to use the original ZF Lifeguard 8 fluid. Don't mess around with cheaper fluid. Don't get aftermarket stuff what people recommend you as being the same. BMW and Land Rover specify ZF Lifeguard 8 fluid and nothing else. That's the biggest mistake usually done is that the wrong fluid is used. It has this little torquing feature in it. And you already opened the fill. Uh, no, I didn't open Oh, do plug. that first, please. Ooh. Oh my God, Christian. So here's the fill plug. Ah. No problem. Yeah, I heard okay. it. Okay. It's most it's... likely gonna get an oil mess. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't need to get that close. Everybody <laughs> knows what oil looks like. <laughs> So you didn't I was know that? filming just the triple. This fluid is not very nice looking. It's not very nice looking. No. It's really nice looking. Yeah, well, it's not bad. If the fluid was changed before, we're going to see it on the date stamp of the oil pan. Oh, yes, we will. We're going to loosen all the bolts. If you're lucky, they all come out real easy, like on this vehicle. It has zero corrosion. But they can also snap, so be really careful with those. Yeah, and we have not been lucky before. Yes. <laughs> the worst is the Discovery yeah, the worst 3. Is the Discovery 3. <laughs> A little better is with the Discovery 4. And this is easy, okay? That's like on a BMW. We don't have it out yet. <laughs> now the plan is to use a big box like this. It's and my shopping basket. Okay, here yeah, we got it all loose now. Oh my god. Yeah. I hope I don't get drenched. Watch it? Yeah. Oh. oh, there's the oil. We'll let the oil rinse out first a little bit. Oh. Okay, now we'll put this oil pan in here. Wipe this off here with the dirtiest rag I found. Oh, the poor desktop mechanics. <laughs> you take this one down. There we go. Put this one on here. We get this out of the way so it doesn't dribble on you as usual. Mm. Date stamp here in this little matrix. And this is row 14 and month number 9. So 914. The vehicle is a 2015, so I would say that's realistic. That's the original oil pan. That's the original oil pan, yeah, yes. See, there are, there are four more magnets here. I didn't know yeah, that. There are magnets here. It's a good thing that we changed this. Yep. The sleeve is dry. We do not have oil weeping out or oil pulled into the harness. So I think we're okay for until the next oil change. And maybe that one is in summer. Yeah, because in right spring. Because right now it's freezing cold. <laughs> it's really and windy. Wow, it's cold. So of course we take this plug off. Here. Oh my God. That's a good idea. <laughs> I would have left it on actually. We have all the mating surfaces 100% clean with the dirtiest rag we found in our shop. Yeah. And now this thing can go. Back are on. you sure that's all it takes? Here we have the tightening sequence and you're gonna start somewhere in a corner. Everybody is really happy to know that now. And I start with number one and 10 newton meters and I gotta hold this upside down, okay? Yeah, not like me. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, we got them all. That was easy. Too easy. Back on the Toyota. <laughs> Racket can go back on. Click, click. 10 newton meters click click so that's all good yeah. yeah so you think that is a lifetime supply well it's not it's a one-time use <laughs> and each bottle is 26 euros god Ooh, 26 euros it's also greenish it's Ooh. 12 o'clock and i haven't even started making lunch number six yeah okay. just about 150 euros We use this tool here. Yeah. 
you can hang this nicely onto the transmission. Hang this in here, and now we can give this a pre-fill until it's dribbling out. And with this pump, it's really easy. And now I have to. I have to close this because it's good oil. <laughs> We don't want to run out. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive oil. <laughs> 100 milliliters, 2.6 euros. Yeah. With a discovery, you can enter the car on the lift through the driver door. But on the green, that's not possible. Those doors are massive. Okay, I'm going to start the vehicle up now. Now the fluid level is now not correct. Put it into reverse. It's actually turning the wheels. I'm going to let it run here for... 10 to 20 seconds, brake it, go to drive, let it turn the wheels again, 10 to 20 seconds, I brake it, so I shift here to D1, let it turn, 10 to 20 seconds in that gear, Shift to D2, 10 to 20 seconds. <laughs> of course there is a forward alert. There we go to neutral. And now I got to crank it to 2000 RPM and hold it for 30 seconds so that the torque converter fills with oil. One. After shifting through the gears and spinning it up, we gotta wait now until it's minimum 30 degrees oil temperature before we can do the final level check. Oh, okay, good. Oh, there's a slight dribble. Here's our light dribble. Now we're gonna have to wait until the thing has 30 degrees. Which is gonna take an hour because the temperature hasn't moved up at all. I'm covered in oil. Everything is covered in oil. And we are still not at 30 degrees. Finally, we got the 30 degree oil temperature. Now we can do the final level check. There's our small dribble, which is then good. Now the vehicle has an oil cooler and that oil cooler is thermostat controlled. So it's a good idea to recheck that level after the vehicle had 80 degrees oil temperature at one point. And then when the temperature is down between 30 and 50, I should check the level again because it's possible that the line towards the oil cooler drains empty and once that opens up, the fluid level may be too low. 35 Newton meter. ready to sell that car. The diesel filter should be a one screw thingy. Most likely the diesel filter is a thing of 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> but because I haven't done it before, I'm gonna take this plastic out and in order to get that plastic out, I'm gonna remove the wiper plates. Oh my god, usually the diesel filter sits underneath. <laughs> now usually means for Vera on a Discovery 4, okay? Exactly, here. He said he says, it's just a couple of minutes. It's been 30 minutes. No, it's not. <laughs> See? Oh my God. By the way, it already got new wiper blades. She stopped filming. Oh my God. <laughs> Nothing to be scared of. So now I can take this piece out and it gives me a little bit more room. The diesel filter is supposed to be replaced every 24,000 miles on this vehicle. But depending in what literature you look from Land Rover. And it says in the workshop manual, diesel spill is unavoidable. Okay, I'm supposed to disconnect the battery. Oh! So please everybody ignore that I haven't done that yet. Oh my god. That's uh, because of the fire hazard. <laughs> That's the Land Rover spill unavoidable rag. There we go. I got a late Christmas present from Edgar. Edgar drives a Grenadier. 
Okay, and he's so certain that this thing will never break <laughs> that he's giving us his old oscilloscope, which is actually a Tektronics, okay? So that's a very capable oscilloscope with a floppy disk. Yeah. Okay. It's a floppy disk. And it has the FFT module in it, okay? So for the nerds under you, the FFT module is really seldom and rare. And an advanced trigger module. Oh, advanced trigger. I don't even know what that is. So hopefully he never has to fix a crankshaft position sensor on his grenadier. And hopefully because we don't have to fix one anytime <laughs> soon. I can use this here as a the reference pulse and now I can see... Oh, look at that. Auto set. Auto set. There we go. <laughs> okay, now I can use my position up down scale here. And I have a perfect two channel oscilloscope for fixing crankshaft position sensors <laughs> on discoveries. <laughs> Now this is really awesome, Edgar. Thank you very much. Ah, I'm really, happy you really can uh, make use of it, and uh, it's it's a pity to have it standing in my workshop with no use for it because I have another one. But here it has a second life. <laughs> yes. It's unbelievable how good they were for the time they were built. I, yes. I assume this one is about what 20 years old. Uh, around 20, 20 years old. Around 20 years old. So this is Edgar's grenadier. The interesting part is. That's already his second one. But no, he didn't trash his first one, okay? The first one had a bunch of issues. Originally, what you decided to just simply order two, just in case one isn't right. Yeah. Ineos, as opposed to what they have promised, yeah. told me you cannot change your configuration anymore. It's too late. It's already in production. So you just bought another one. So I just ordered another one. What a good concept. <laughs> yes. I okay, think. so the first one you sold. I think without a loss, but with there a decent no, price. It was a minor profit, but it, compared to the price it now has, it's yeah. a bargain for the buyer. And you have exactly the configuration you originally wanted. Down to the washers, yes. Down to the washers. Yeah. And because it's a later version, a lot of small issues got fixed in the meantime. This did not even go over a piece of grass yeah. yet. This is still mall crawler level. Yeah. It is okay. Uh, on the one line I had to push a button, on the other line I had to do something what I don't remember. But it's off, okay? And now I can lift this thing up because I got myself a lot of room. And there was actually... Oh, oh that's a major oh. diesel spill then, what I was talking right about. I think I gotta open this and there is no water. <laughs> no, that's all diesel. Oh, okay. That was actually easy. But it took longer than we care to admit. Um, this filter is hopefully the right one. So I bought the new one. Where is it? Ooh. It's white. Like the queen. Gotta go on like this. There. Yes, it's called NV White. Yeah, are you sure NV White? <laughs> okay. Rotate this and it snaps in place. That gotta go back on. That's the water in fuel sensor. Tighten it hand tight. That's good enough. Now this baby got to go back in here. And for some reason, ours doesn't have a drain line for the water and fuel connection. It probably got lost in a Land Rover shop before. And next time when we do this, we don't have to take the wiper plates out because then I know how to do it. Yeah, it's in. There we go. Click, click and click, click. The racetrack pracer again. I mean a grenadier is for sure not as nice then. <laughs> a grenadier doesn't even have such a brace. <laughs> We're almost done. And we can take it to a test drive, see if it still works. Oh my God. Click, click. Click, click. You don't want to lose them in the rain. Let's just cycle the ignition two or three times, like back in the old days, and give it a start. It sounds like the fuel pump. Watch it. <laughs> Ooh. And it's running. We'll check these two lines right here. See, I put a tie wrap around it because somehow this metal clip didn't want to stay inside. Now you guys saw it, okay? I wanted to hide it, but I missed it. What else did we do on this maintenance job? We changed also both air filters, remember? <laughs> now, the way these air filter boxes work is basically the primary turbo gets supplied from this one, the secondary turbo from this one. So this air filter box over there is typically clean even after many, many thousands of miles because it only kicks in after whatever, 2500 RPM versus this one is used all the time. This is not the original air filter. 
it's really not very dirty. The vehicle what? that is as dirty as it gets in our garage. The Poland filter. Poland filter. The Poland filter. Okay. <laughs> the indoor filter is gonna be. Oh my god! Holy cow! <laughs> Did you hear that? You gotta set the fan speed to low. You gotta keep the air conditioning on, and you have to push the recirculation button for three seconds. One, two, three, to put it into latched recirculation mode. And only then you're allowed to change that filter. You gotta hit the button to open the cloth box. Yeah. And then there is a latch here and here. Oh, we're gonna get problems. Of that filter. Yeah, it's oh, about it's time. dirty. Oh my god. So I bought a good one, of course. Not some cheap one. And you see the airflow going in this direction? Yeah. Yeah. So here, the airflow got to go in this direction. Now so that's an MAN, -N, which means OEM quality, if not OEM. Look at that. Daihatsu, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Subaru, and Toyota use. So, got the new filter in, and I understand now why you have to set it in recirculation mode because only then this flap is open so you can access the filter. Yeah. So, this looks good. Close this up. Put the book inside. That's what this cloth box is for, I yes, suppose. Yes, there's nothing else. We Are you hear it? The diesel heater. Yeah. So. But we're gonna throw it away. We put new wiper blades on, like we already said. Now we're gonna get the good stuff again. You were one type riding me that he had these up here and he changed his wiper blade and he let it snap and the windshield broke. So that makes a bad hair day. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> You keep filming. Yeah, but I want to changing wiper blades. <laughs> I want to film the click click. I want to say they are original. They never got changed. Okay. Yeah. So this should never happen on a Land Rover maintained vehicle. Absolutely never. We did put a new coolant tank in because the old coolant tank was contaminated with oil. I thought we agreed on doing something simple, with a one hundred percent chance of success. I that does not qualify for that. We're just going to replace the coolant reservoir. Yeah, which ends up in a major coolant spill. You see, I even look it up here in the manual. And remember, you can get that manual from fedrr.com or something like that. Coolant expansion tank removal and installation. It even says here, possible after 3 o'clock on a Saturday <laughs> after you fix all the other cars. <laughs> and nothing worked. Clamp the hoses to minimize coolant loss. Take a bunch of hoses off. Be prepared to collect escaping coolant. One connector, one hose clip. Completely new coolant. No. No? no we already got new coolant in from, from our last repair. I don't remember that. I must have been sick. I got a new container here for 46 euros. Maybe I can fill the coolant without any problems. We already changed the oil to 5W Dumbass. Yes, the oil change is of course new, including filter. Brand new Mahler oil filter. After about an hour cleaning everything up, I changed my setup here. Hopefully this is now less messy. Uh, that is not too bad. The damn thing holds 10 liters. That was worthwhile. up the remaining mess. Yes, I know. I'm actually running 5W30 on this engine. The reason is that I have not found a single oil finder which recommends 5W40. 
So this engine in all locations on this planet, it's actually running 5W30. And it's also not known for bearing failures. So I took out 0.6 liters out of this container. This adds up to 9.4 liters in the engine. Very well, that's done. And it's 5W dumbass. We didn't put in 5W40 because there is no clear sign that this engine has ever suffered from bearing failures. It's not wrong by design like on the 2.7. So I think it runs just fine on 5W dumbass. Oh, one more thing we need to do. I got to reset the adaptation value. So on my gap tool, I go to service and test. Okay, then I go to transmission and I say here clear adaptation values, proceed. Engine will automatically shut off. What? Oh my God. Switching ignition on again. Last chance. <gasps> Operation failed. <gasps> Hopefully we didn't destroy anything. Oh my God. You Smart ruined key. it. Smart key not found. I think that's why it failed. Maybe it didn't like that the key wasn't in there, okay? Mm, yeah, of course, but now it's all screwed up. See, succeeded. Okay. I think it was not a wise idea to do this reset while the key was not in the vehicle. The queen is so smart, okay, that it doesn't let you reset stuff from the outside with no key on the inside. Very last thing I gonna do is I have here an app on my phone, which is called Sprit Monitor, and I have my car set up in this app. And now I can add here an entry, which is called Spendings. And I can say here plus, and now I can enter my data and all the maintenance I've done and the kilometers and so on. I can even set a reminder when I want this thing to wake me up and say, hey, Queen needs oil change again. So it this is just a... did that for that one. So this is a really nice app. I'm gonna put a link into our video description and please don't ask where you find the video description. If you don't find that, you shouldn't be working on these cars, okay? <laughs> you should get yourself an update of the last human mankind, you know, version three, Upgrade. Can you stop laughing behind the camera? <laughs> no. <laughs> Other than that, we have to do a test drive now with the vehicle and drive kind of careful because the transmission is going to shift a little bit erratic until I have it driven through all driving cycles. That's going to take about 10 kilometers. Everything will be fine, I'm pretty sure. If it's not, we'll add something in the... Uh, yeah. Maybe add something in the outtake if it's not, okay? Other than that, we want to thank our Patreons a lot for their support. And we want to thank Edgar for the oscilloscope. We're going to be using a lot on this baby. And we'll see you next Sunday.